In this video, we'll be discussing cancer genetics. We'll first look at different types of cancer cells, and then we'll look at the process by which a normal cell can be converted into a cancerous cell. So let's look at the two major types of cancerous cells that we have, benign and malignant. With a benign cancer tumor or lesion, it is gonna be a type of tumor that stays in one location, and thus will not spread or invade other types of tissues. A benign tumor can often be removed by surgical intervention or targeted by specific cancer treatments such as radiation or chemo. Malignant tumors, however, have the ability to spread and invade other tissues of the body, a process called metastasis. Metastatic tumors are very dangerous because they can spread all over the body. Management of metastatic tumors is a lot more difficult than benign tumors because there's often not one surgical or drug-based treatment that can deal with it. Oftentimes, radiation or more broad-focusing chemotherapies are used for malignant tumors. On the genetic end, cancer can be caused by two types of genes proto-oncogenes or tumor-suppressing genes. Proto-oncogenes will activate the cell cycle. However, tumor-suppressing genes are genes that will regulate the cell cycle to make sure that it doesn't get out of control. A mutation to a proto-oncogene forms what is called an oncogene. You might recognize the word onco from the term oncologist, which is a cancer doctor. An oncogene refers to a cancer-causing gene. Now, an oncogene is gonna be a gene that increases cell proliferation. However, if we have a mutation in our tumor suppressing gene, we lose the ability to regulate the cell cycle and cell proliferation, and thus we have dysregulated cell division. So again, we're either gonna have a lot more activation of the cell cycle by these oncogenes, which are going to feed and feed and feed into cell division, or we're going to end up losing our ability to regulate. First, let's look at the proto-oncogene. Shown here in yellowish green, we'll say this is a normal gene. And shown here in orange, this is going to be the mutant gene. So with a proto-oncogene, we say their inheritance is done in a dominant fashion. The reason why we consider this to be dominant inheritance is because we only need one mutant allele for this proto-oncogene to actually cause cancer. It's like we have a rocket bike with two empty engines on the back of it that we put fuel into one of. If we put fuel into one of our rocket engines, the bike is still gonna go faster than if it was just driving with its motor alone. So just like this gene, we only need one copy of this gene to increase the amount of protein product that is gonna increase replication, whether that is gonna be a transcription factor or some other kind of mitosis promoting factor or anything else that's gonna increase our cell proliferation, we only need one allele to actually cause cancer. So thus these oncogenes have a dominant inheritance. Tumor suppressing genes, on the other hand, have a recessive pattern of inheritance. Let's imagine these two chromosomes that we're looking at have a tumor suppressing gene at this locus. Let's think about this like the brakes on our bike. If our bike has a set of brakes in the front and in the back, if we lose our front brakes, we still have the rear brakes that can help slow us down. However, we would have to lose both sets of brakes, both the front and the rear, for this bike to no longer be able to stop. We'd have to have a mutation in both loci in order for us to completely lose the function of this tumor suppressing gene and for it to be mutated into a cancerous form. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.